So welcome again to the multimedia course in 4430. Today as per the textbook we will be covering chapter 4 colors and image and video. In this chapter we will see three sections. First we will introduce and recall from the high school the color science. Then we will see the used color models and images and in video each apart. This chapter is very important and crucial for the understanding of the following chapters because they use the color models and whenever we refer to one of them, you ha we have to be sure you understand why we chose this color model and not the other. So the first section is color science and we will begin by recalling the notions we learned in high school about light and spectra. We all know that light is an electromagnetic wave and its color is characterized by the wavelength content of the light. For example, laser lights. Let's consider laser lights. They are formed by single wavelengths. For example, the ruby laser, which produces a bright sc scarlet red beam, is located at, has a wavelength of 694.3 nanometer. And this figure here, it shows the power distribution of daylight. So this is the daylight and it is composed of a combination of wavelengths and this is the distribution of them. Okay, so we can notice uh, already that uh, they are going from 400 to 700 nanometers. So uh, this is the interval we saw in the uh, previous slide and this is called the visible wavelengths because they are not the only inside the uh, wavelength range but those are only what we can perceive, what humans can see. So humans cannot detect all the light, they just uh, can see contributions in what we call visible wavelengths and which is electromagnetic wave and for the short uh, wavelengths we can have a blue sensation and we have, for the long ones we have red sensations. As I already said, a nanometer is uh, a notation is an M and it is the value of 10 to the power minus 9 meters. And we can see that um, below and above this range we have the ultraviolet radiation which goes from 180 to 400 nanometers and then we have the visible region and after the visible region we have what we call the infrared region which goes from 700 to uh, nanometers to 1 millimeter. We to arrive at this famous skeleton schema which is done by Sir Ishaq Newton's experiment and which uh, confirms that most light sources uh, produce contributions over many wavelengths. So not uh, like the laser uh, uh, lights, they are composed of many wavelengths. And here in the schema skeleton, we can see the daylight which comes and the phenomenon uh, applied by Ishaq Newton is to disperse the, the light uh, into the composing wavelengths. And here you can see uh, when touching the prism, they are dispersed. A uh, similar phenomenon is, can be done with the spectrophotometer, which is a device used to measure the visible light. So you can have, as you can see per the schema, you can reflect the light from a diffractioning, uh, from a diffraction grating, a ruled surface, and then it spreads it out uh, to show the different wavelengths. So here we can see the light source, the collimator, the length, and which uh, well, the light travels this to arrive to monochromator, which is a prism or grading system that can distribute, disperse the wavelengths. And here we can place um, in the spectrophotometer a wavelength selector, a slit, and then the beam will touch the sample solution in cuvette and which uh, filters it and reflects it to the detector. And after this uh, step, we can measure what is the uh, wavelength of this uh, a particular um, composition. So we continue our recall lesson to arrive the, uh, to study the human vision 
quickly as possible and we will take only what we need from this uh, knowledge we can say here that the eye works like a camera because we, we have to understand how the eye works and how they um, arrive to decide on a system for the camera so the eye works um, like a camera and the lens focusing an image onto the retina so you, you see here the eye pupil the retina and the backward and um, the image traverses the pupil and uh, is displayed on the retina upside down and left right reversed the retina is if you can see this the zoom in of the retina you can see that it is an array okay of consecutive roads and cones you have roads and you have the roads in black as you can see here in the animation and there are three kind of cones the roads come into play when the light levels are low so when at night for example where is uh, when we are in a dark place they produce an image in shades of gray and you can recall what the roads uh, say uh, do in the proverb all cats are gray at night la nuit tous les chats sont gris et puis uh, we have also the cones which are the red blue and the green ones you can see here in the in the uh, zoom in and they are of three kinds effectively in the eye and each kind of cone produces a signal and with differing pigments so the red cone is we call it red cone because it is more sensitive to red uh, color and so uh, the same for green and B cones which are more sensitive to the green uh, colors and B color wavelengths. It seems like also add to this that the brain uh, makes use of differences not only of the values of perceived by these cones but also of combinations like the difference R minus G, G minus B, B minus R and other uh, combinations to produce what we can say a high level, a highlight level achromatic channel. So here is the drawing of sections to the human eye with a schematic enlargement of the retina and we can retain, we can remember now that what is important here that there are roads and cones and roads they do, do not care about the, the, the color, but they do care about how much light is there. And the cones, they are sensitive. We have three kinds and each kind is sensible to a color. So this is a spectral sensitivity of the eye uh, diagram. And here we can see that the eye is most sensitive to light in the middle of visible spectrum. So what are we seeing here? This is a very important schema in which we can see four curves. R, G, B, and the fourth is V in dotted lines, in dashed lines. What are the R, G, B first? The R, G, B is the sensitivity of the uh, cones we saw that are present in the human eye. So we took these cones and we measured how much they are sensible to the different wavelengths of the, of the light. So we see that the R cone is becomes more and more sensible in the middle just like the G and also the B they, uh, they, there are areas of, uh, of for which the uh, B is sensible to those wavelengths but we have to state that the blue receptor sensitivity so the, the curve here marked as capital B is not to the scale so it is not here like um, point to uh, response it is so much smaller but for you to see the overall shape of B we magnified the B color so why the B sensitivity is already less than the R and G is too much less not like you see because blue receptor is um, uh, it is much smaller because it the blue color is a late arrival in the for the humans so we, historically we as humans cannot see blue and later this is a later addition this is the new versions uh, the new version of humans that can now see the color blue 
and that's why we are not used to see it and we are not used to see the differences in the color blue as much as we can see the differences in the color red and green and uh, this is why statistically blue is a favorite color because everything that is new is, fa is surprising so another remark i want you to see here is that you remember the wavelengths we saw in the visible wave uh, lengths uh, range uh, you can see that blue cones are uh, most sensitive to uh, to wavelengths that are in the blue range and as for the green also the green and also the red so this is the sensitivity of each one apart of the row of the cones and if we sum the three, the three values of the three vectors, we can have what we call here luminous efficiency function, noted v of lambda, and which is the sum of those curves RGB. And this we refer to this by saying this is the overall sensitivity of the eyes. So what do we mean by this? Wavelengths of uh, of signals of light signals that are in this range if they change we can notice more than if on the extremities they change so if we are in a dark place or we if we are seeing a dark image and it gets a little bit darker or if it is a very light image and it gets a little bit lighter we are not sensible as much as we are sensible in the middle of the range and we continue to image formation to say that we actually image light that is reflected from a surface. So here is an eye, here is the light, suppose the sun, and here the pier. What is going here in the schema? The eye is looking to the pier to see it to form an image. But in fact, we are not seeing the pier, the pear. We are seeing what the pear reflects to us. And the proof is, if there is no sun, the pear is always here, but we cannot see it. So, what we, what we see is the reflection and not the object itself. And here I read, we actually image light that is reflected from a surface. So, we image the light. The surfaces reflect different amounts of light at different wavelengths. Dark surfaces reflect less energy than light surfaces. And light from illuminant with SPDE um, with illuminant uh, and light from the illuminant, okay, here has an SPD called a uh, function of uh, lambda E of lambda, illuminant of lambda. What happens? It, impig it impinges on a surface, and not all the surface behaves the same thing. If you if you direct a light on a book, it is not like if you direct a light over a, a glass, over a, um, a, a paper, over water, etc. So every surface has its own function, which is called surface spectral reflectance, reflectance uh, function, noted as of lambda. And then the light, when it impigments the surface, it is reflected according to the surf, uh, surface function. And then it comes to the eye, and then it is filtered by the eye's cone. And the function for the eye's cones, so every eye has cones, maybe Daltonian people, uh, for, uh, they have cones that do not work. They don't see, for example, the red. So every eye cone has three different functions which are q of r of lambda q of g of lambda and q of b of lambda and here is what we want to see what is the color signal what is the color signal c of lambda is called the color signal is in fact we see what is the e of lambda times s of lambda okay we perceive it and everyone perceive it then on its on it on its own way how much he can uh, make functions the functions q of r q of g and q of b so here 
we introduce a notion of perception. What I perceive is not necessarily what you perceive. Sometimes two people dispute. They see, they say, one of them say, this is a, a blue spot here. And the other say, no, this is a green spot. You see it blue, I see it green. And here is the perception functions where uh, it comes into play. In similar fashion, there are three signals produced at each pixel location in the camera system. And the analog signals, uh, they were three and they continue to be in digital. So when we, when we uh, transform the analog signals into digital ones, we, we have to represent the values as integers and thus the, they are truncated and uh, to be stored in integers and then stored in the file system. So if precision is 8-bit for each of the channels R, G and B, you have maximum value for each channel 255 and minimum 0 as we um, mentioned in the uh, previous chapter. And the light entering the eye of computer uh, user is in fact emitted by the screen and which we consider a self-luminous source that we need to know the light uh, E of lambda entering the R. Here we can represent uh, the RGB famous color cube. In the center we have 0, 0, 0, R for G and B. And uh, it is the color black, the absence of color. And in the opposite side we can find the color white which is for maximum I, B and G values. And in the corners between B and uh, R, for example, you can find the magenta color. Between B and G, you can find the cyan color. And between R and G, you can have the yellow color. Okay, so this is the RGB cube. What is gamma correction? We rapidly mentioned that in all CRT screens, in all cathode ray tube screens, the light that was emitted, so suppose we are going to display the color, for example, 100, 100, 0. So we emit the values 100, 100, 0 over 3 phosphor uh, tubes in order to enlighten the red and green and um, blue uh, uh, colors phosphor uh, to the given value. But what happens, in fact, that the light that is emitted due to the device uh, limitation is proportional to a voltage that is not linear that is raised to the power of gamma and approximately in the devices gamma is the, of the order of 2 power 2 so the the colors we want to display is in are in fact not the same that we intend so look at here in the in the in the image graduated from dark columns to lighter columns you can see that the dark columns, you cannot differenti differentiate between the colors. Why? Because the effect of the absence of gamma correction, why, why we do gamma correction? Because the device has a, a default a behavior that uh, applies this function, okay? This, expo this exponential, uh, uh, sorry, this uh, hyperbolic function and it lowers the low values it lowers more the low values so whenever you have a dark value it is even lower it decreases them so how do we correct them we multiply simply by the inverse function so to to have what we what we initially wanted to see okay so if uh, if it is raised to a power this is a power function we can uh, raise to the uh, inverse of this power to get back to the linear dashed line. This is a gamma correction and notice its effect in the low values. Now we uh, arrive at a very important also topic. This is a very important experience that you have to remember and it is called color matching functions. So recall that we say that the eye has a perception fu has perception functions and you cannot you, you cannot guess what others can see okay we have common we can we have common properties but we can measure these properties properties only statically 
So if we want to decide that this color is red, how did we proceed? We asked a, lot, a big number of uh, people, what is this color? And they all agreed that is red, so we proceed like this. This is a statical statistics, okay? Uh, we set parameters statically, statistically, sorry. So the technique is evolved in psychology, okay? And it is consisting to match a combination of basic RGB lights to a given shade. So look at the schema. Here you have a light to be matched. And then you have a black partition. So the, the eye where it is looking, it is looking to a white at a white screen, but the white screen is partitioned by a black partition. So the eye can look at two different areas that cannot interact with each other. And here we show the human eye. Many, many, many people, we show them the light. And then we say we have, uh, you, we say to them, you have those three primaries, red, green, and blue lights emitted. And please match the given color so you are asked to separately adjust the brightness of three primaries. So you have, for example, here three side um, slide bars, three bottoms, three etc. Please regulate those beams so that you can have here and here and the two white screen parts the same color. Okay, just keep adjusting to to know what is this color. So maybe he, for example under the same room and illumination, so under the same conditions, of course. Maybe you set red to 2, green to 0, blue to 100 to obtain the same light, okay? And then we note this experiment. And then we say thank you, the, the other one will come, and we make statistics. We make the average of the values that everyone has given to us. So this device is called colorimeter and the experience is called color matching functions. And then we vary the lights, okay? And then we vary the lights and for each light we note the parameter for red, green and blue values to, to obtain this light. And the C, what is the C? The C is the Commission Internationale de l'Eclairage, which is International Commission of Illumination. This is an international organization, okay? The C chromaticity diagram did this color matching uh, experience and it obtained these curves, okay? So in order to get, for example, the light of uh, wavelengths 550 nanometers, you have to do such red, this much blue, and this much green, okay? So you have only three primaries, but using these three primaries, you can obtain whatever wavelength you want, okay? So this is the experience. So this is the experience, and you can notice here that the CRGB color matching functions are amounts of R and uh, red and green and blue selected to match each single wave light and the curves are noted R bar of lambda, G bar of lambda and, um, and B bar of lambda. The problem here is, as you can see, the R curve is descends under the X axis a little bit. So the R curve is, has a negative lobe what does this mean? So, how can I match a color using a negative parameter? I can either put a little bit of red or a big part of red or zero red. Okay, but how can I put a negative red? So, this is not applicable. So, we have to change a little bit the, the um, model. Okay, and for this model, we introduced a set of fictitious primaries. So those are the real primaries. We will introduce fictitious primaries noted X, Y, and G capital. And here comes the other uh, C standard, which is called C standard X, Y, and Z capital, because there will be small color matching functions. And here 
we have them how did we obtain them if you can notice uh, well we uh, we obtained them by f by applying a transformation in order to not have any more the R lobe negative okay and how did we get the middle the y the y is we kept uh, making equations to add a certain value to divide by a certain value so we can have the middle uh, curve just like the luminous efficiency curve v of lambdas we just saw to uh, certain slides apart so remember this Remember this V of lambda, which is the sensitivity of the overall sensitivity of the eye. So we um, have this color transformation to match it. And here in the schema, I superpose the two so that you can see that Y bar of lambda is exactly matching V of lambda. So this is the chromaticity diagram. And this is in 3D space because you have three curves, three values, three, three primaries to match each uh, color in the visible wavelengths. And we wanted to go now to the two-dimensional space. In order to go to two-dimensional space, we factor out the magnitude of vectors y, uh, x, y, and z capital. How do we do that? We can divide, for example, we can normalize this is a very known, uh, well-known technique. We can normalize you by dividing, for example, by the sum of squares. But we chose, they chose in C to normalize by dividing by the sum of the simple sum, not the root square of the square uh, sum of squares. So here we have x is equal to x divided by the sum. Y is also the normalized normalized uh, capital Y and Z not the normalized capital Z. And how did we pass to the two dimensional? We still have small x, y, and Z. In fact, Z is not nothing else but one minus x plus y. So one, uh, so we can um, disregard a Z because whenever we want to uh, to know it, it is one minus x plus y. So we have now small x and small y. And this is called the C chromaticity diagram. And as you can see in the figure, what we can see in the figure, what uh, new keywords we want to learn now, this is the locus of the points for monochromatic light. Okay, the contour here is the locus of the point for monochromatic light. How did I get this plane? This is a projection as per as you have seen here. This is a projection of the three stimulus vector capital X, capital Y, capital Z onto the plane. How, which plane? The plane that connects the point 100, 0, 010 0, 0, and 0, 0, 001 in the color cube. Okay, in the uh, sorry, not in the color cube, in the cube of capital X, capital Y, and capital Z. So if you consider this plane and you project all the colors over here, you can have this spectrum locus of the... Why it is spectrum locus? Like why it, it does not occupy all the plane? Because there are only a, 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 a small range of visible wavelengths. The other are wavelengths, but they are not visible. So they are out of the spectrum locus. And chromaticity on the spectrum locus, so chromaticity on this shape, on the horseshoe shape, which we call spectrum locus, represent pure colors. It are, they are the most saturated ones, okay? And as you can notice, if you come into the center, okay, the colors that come closer to the white point here in the center of the spectrum locus, are more and more unsaturated so the colors on the spectrum locus are the most saturated ones and you come to the center they are become more and more unsaturated so more and more weak, mixed if you want with white color for a mixture of two lights if you have two lights and you have the representation of those two lights on in uh, inside or on the spectrum locus 
If you mix those two lights, the resulting chromaticity lie on the straight line joining the chromaticity of those two lights. So you have, for example, if you have a light here and another light here, and you want to mix them, you superpose those lights, you form the uh, line, the straight line connecting these two values, and the mixture is it lies here it is either one point of this line okay another property of this chromacity diagram is uh, how to obtain the dominant wavelengths suppose you have a color and you want to know which is which wavelength composing this color is the dominant one you can position this uh, color on the spectrum locus because it is the intersection of the line jo uh, joining the white point to the given color. This is the white color you want to know. So you just uh, rely to the white point and you continue, you extend it to the spectrum locus. So this is the dominant wavelength in this, uh, in this color. So the spectrum locus is the boundary of the area of the two-dimensional plane that uh, part that uh, englobes all the visible colors inside it. How beautiful is this representation of the C company? So, um, are all the visible colors representable? What is the question now? Can I print all the colors that I can see in nature? Can I display on the screen all the colors that I can see in nature? Put apart the digitization uh, step. Is the device that I am using, the electronic device that I'm using, capable of showing me all the possible colors that are inside the spectrum locus? So here is the question of the out of gamut colors. Out of gamut colors, as you can deduce this triangle, every triangle, every color inside this triangle is in the gamut and every color that is inside the contouring of the spectrum locus but outside this triangle is out of gamut but this triangle is not fixed for every device so every device has its gamut boundaries every device is capable of showing you a set of colors inside the spectrum locus the biggest the triangle is, the better the device is, but um, the gamut can be limited. So you can, you can uh, arrive at a time that you want for a certain device to show this color represented here by a triangle. But instead, uh, due to the limitation of the device, he show you the color here, which is the intersection of this color uh, on the line. Uh, relying it to the uh, white point to the center of the spectrum locus so he cannot show you this color represented by the small triangle but instead he show you the best matching possible one okay so uh, uh, this is the color transform matrix for uh, device specific it is device specific for uh, every RGB primaries, you can obtain your X and Y and of course Z, uh, small uh, X and Y and Z primaries by applying this matrix. But this matrix is device specific. So every device has its own matrix because he knows his hardware. So he generates the adequate matrix. So if you have RGB primaries, you can get X and Y. And if you have X and Y primaries, you reverse the operation to get the RGB primaries. So uh, what if the RGB numbers are negative? So if you have an X and Y and you want to know how to display it, maybe you are given indexes here, uh, values here in this transformation matrix or in the reverse transformation matrix that are negative. How is that going? The how is the device going to display the color for you so this is what we are what we explained as out of gamut color he cannot display it to you so he uh, he display a solution which is a uh, closest in the gamut color available uh, which is the intersection between uh, as i already explained the line 
and from the color to the white point with the boundary of the device color gamut another solution or other set of solution exists which uh, for for example selects the closest complementary color he will show you with a complementary color in order to filter out the uh, the values so it's like the subtraction operation and you have to see also the gamma correction so here we are supposing that everything is linear for the device there is no gamma effect and thus there is no gamma correction but the reality the re reality is that there is a gamma e effect and there is a gamma cor uh, correction Another uh, color model also for the C lab, which is not XY, it is called lab L star, A star, B star, or L asterisk, A asterisk, B asterisk C lab color model. And why the C uh, organization uh, did this uh, color model? Because she wanted to follow the Weber's law. What Weber uh, says is that if you equally perceive something, the difference, the numerical difference must be, must be proportional. So he says, it's slow says, equally perceived differences are proportional to magnitude. What is the rule of thumb here? The rule of thumb is equally perceived changes must be relative. That means the ratio of change must be the same for the dark and for the bright lights. Mathematically, what does this mean? It means that the intensity I equally perceived if the delta I over I is constant whenever you go. So when, whatever the change is, if you can perceive it, you have, uh, if, you can, if you can perceive it, for example, delta I, you have, it, it must be the same all over the range. For example, to understand this best, take the sound as an example. Um, if it's quiet, you can hear the small changes in the sound. But if it's noisy, you cannot hear those small changes anymore. If it's noisy, the change has to be the same proportion. So the, the, you have to uh, work on the ratio and not on the absolute value. So the proportion of the change must be equal in order for you to perceive it the same way okay and for this we change the x y c lab model to the l asterisk a asterisk and b asterisk model in which in this space uh, a human vision c lab space that uh, we quantify the differences perceived in color and in brightness and now we have a model of also three primaries with L representing the, the luminance and um, on the other axis we have A uh, and B. And for A positive it represents the red on the opposition where A negative it is almost green. And for B positive, it is the color yellow and B negative, it is the color blue. And this is a cylinder and this is a cutway into the 3D solid of co uh, coordinate space associated with the color. So, to, with respect to Weber's law, we want to um, transform again our three primaries in order to, uh, perceive, to, to make the perception relative to the difference. And we uh, pose our uh, equations in order to deduce the L asterisk, A asterisk, and B asterisk from the X, Y, and Z values. And we use in the equations the X, N, Y, N, and Z, N, which are the X, Y, Z values for the white point. Auxiliary definitions for the three primaries are the chroma and the hue angle. The chroma is the square root of a uh, square b square, uh, whereas the hue angle, which is the angle here on the on the wheel of the cylinder, is the arc tangent b asterisk over a asterisk. So we have we can distinguish the L primary, which is the white level from white to black. L equals zero is a black and L equal 100 is Y and we have the A and B which are parameters to turn around the 
uh, the cylinder. More color coordinate schemes exist and be aware that all of these we have to use a gamma correction um, or we have to ignore it or we, we can ignore it. So whenever you have a transformation matrix from one model to one model, keep in mind the gamma correction and all the other parameters. That aside from the other coordinate schemes, uh, the CMY, which stands for cyan magenta yellow, we will see it during this lesson. The HSL, HSV, HSI, which are hue saturation, lightness value, or intensity. So those are different systems, but somehow similar. And the equations uh, differ. And um, HCI, which stands for hue, chroma, and intensity. Hue value and chroma, hue saturation and chroma, or hue saturation and D for darkness. And this is a schema representing the HSV color scheme, which is also uh, very known. And instead of the cylinder, since at the end of the cylinder there are only black uh, colors, we can represent uh, the values to vary inside a cone instead of inside a cylinder. So this was the section about the color science and now we will study the color models in images. Uh, first we will think about the RGB color model for displays is used to store color information directly in RGB channels and uh, it's a form device uh, dependent and usually it uses 8 bits per color channel. In fact, instead of 8 bits, the devices use in fact 12 bits to avoid an aliasing effect in dark image areas. So. Uh, the, aliasing, the aliasing is represented using more bits in order to, to uh, uh, f uh, make fa uh, in order to solve this problem. Contour bands result from gamma correction also in fewer available integer levels. So uh, to, to uh, solve this, they use more bits. Computer graphics store integers proportional to intensity in a frame buffer and then the gamma correction uh, loot between frame buffer and display and if gamma correction is applied before, if it was applied to the floats before quantizing to integer and before storage in the frame buffer, then you can use only 8 bits per channel. Uh, we have to mention here the multi-sensor cameras, so uh, uh, add to the traditional cameras that used to work. There are since uh, 2000 new multi-sensor cameras which are more accurate uh, and produce more accurate color that can be achieved by using these cameras with more than three sensors. So we until now we are talking about uh, about the, the primary, the three primaries, okay, and now there exist cameras with more than three sensors and of course with more than three color filters. One way of doing this is for example to use a rotating filter that places different color filters in the light, uh, pass over a quick series of such, so uh, to, to vary the number of filters, we, we make one additional rotating filter which can vary the filters and rotate. And one example is in the Museum, Museum of Modern Art in New York City, which you, in which you can find um, arts that were uh, captured with uh, six channel cameras. And the capture images of important uh, artwork, of course, you have to have, you have to capture a bigger resolution, more details, more color information, everything. So this is uh, a multi-sensor camera used. Also, uh, for you can um, encounter cameras that uh, removes, uh, that remove the near infrared filter typically placed in a camera, to in order to extend the camera sensitivity into infrared. We will now see uh, two camera dependent color uh, schemes which are uh, uh, S -H uh, HSV and uh, sRGB which is standard RGB. For, as for S uh, HSV, 
hue uh, saturation and value a hue the hue it's the color the pure color saturation is uh, stands as stands for the saturation of the color and it is the chroma divided by its luminance so the more desaturated the color is the closer it is to gray okay and the more it is saturated the color is the more pure and you have also the third primary which is the value which correlates to the brightness as perceived by humans so this system is commonly used in image processing and editing software because it separates the hue from it means it separates the chroma the color from the saturation and value and you can edit better the image and here are the, the equations from which having R and G and B, you can get HSV. So you have to know that there is a linear transformation between systems and you can um, go forward and backward from each color system. Another, uh, another uh, camera dependent uh, color is, uh, is the uh, standard RGB which was proposed first by Hewlett and Packer and Microsoft and then it was later standardized by the IEC which is the International Inter Electronical Commission in order to be used in on the web so on the web whenever you have three values for RGB it's uh, considered unless otherwise mentioned it is considered to be sRGB so balance between human color perception and divide dependent color this is a solution uh, we, we cannot uh, have an absolute value the set of absolute transformation matrix so we will balance we will take a, a midway between what the human perceive and what the device can offer and it is tied to color space of a particular reference display device so we take a display device we say this is our reference this is this is the standard of the devices most of the devices can do this and we take this color space and the set of parameters here in order to go from human perception model xyz to what possible what can be possible displayed on most of the devices rgb and uh, this is adopted as a reference color as i said on the web unless otherwise stated so uh, this uh, color scheme presupposes certain standard viewing condition of course and it specifies a transform for uh, gamma correction for a gamma which is near 2 by 2 and if you do the calculation you will get this matrix so when the white um, is rgb 111 XYZ triple is the standard light because the standard because there are many white colors there are many standard lights so for in this color scheme the 111 primary for RGB stands stand for the color light D65 divided by 100 and for this uh, white you have the XYZ the following values 0 0.9505 1 and 1.8 Nine zero, zero eight nine zero. So this is a standard color scheme. Another uh, color model we will study is the subtractive color model, which so far before the CMY color model we are, we are going to see in this slide, you uh, studied additive color, so a color plus a color. So when two light beams impigen on a target, their color adds. That's what we say on the a C uh, lab on, on the CXYZ and when for example in a screen two phosphors on a cathode ray tube screen are on so their color adds so it's so like uh, the color plus the other color but the fact is not applied on the uh, printing because you print you don't print on a black paper you print on a white paper so for ink uh, deposited on a paper the opposite situation holds for example if you print a yellow ink spot on the paper what happens what you, why do you see yellow because the yellow that is posted on the paper will subtract the blue from the white illumination because you have the yellow because you have the uh, 
paper is white and the light is uh, white so the yellow spot will subtract the blue because the blue as you can see on the RGB cube look this is the R axis green axis this is the R axis here and you have the green axis and you have the blue axis and this is the RGB cube and you can see that the yellow is the opposite corner of the saturation corner of blue so on the blue axis the maximum value you go diagonally in the cube and you have the yellow so what happens the yellow will subtract the blue from the white paper and thus it will reflect the red and green which uh, will appear as yellow because you can see on the cube that the yellow is the addition of red and green and uh, for this you need a subtractive color scheme and you will do the subtraction so the yellow is the opposite of blue on the, the cube red you have cyan and for green you have magenta so you we propose the cyan magenta yellow color scheme which is if the values go from 0 to 1 instead of going from 0 to 255 we, we have a you have uh, this uh, very easy equation cyan magenta yellow r equal to 1 minus rgb what is under color remover instead of cyan magenta yellow you have printers which have four cartridges for inks uh, because there uh, is the fourth ink which is the k the letter b is used for the color blue to represent the color black we will use the letter k so what uh, why do we use a, an additional color three primaries are very sufficient for sharper and cheaper printer colors if you mix um, if you want to have a blue color you according to this team you can see now if you add magenta cyan and yellow you will have your blue color but the fact is you in reality in, in, in practice you will not have the black the sharp black you want so and plus you are uh, you are losing ink from three colors cartridges and this is very expensive it is most cheaper for you to buy a black cartridge and whenever you have to print black you just use this ink so you add this to the primaries and they become four and for sharper and cheaper printer colors you calculate that part of the cmy uh, uh, mix that would be black and you remove it from the color proportions and uh, add it back as a real black so you take the minimum of the three primaries it is the k component and the uh, and you subtract it from the component cm and y and uh, you got your system cmyk system i will leave, leave for you the effort to uh, to see what is printer gamut so what what is printer gamut uh, just like we saw uh, some slides before uh, previously that uh, out of gamut bound you have also a, a, a gamut for the devices and for the printer and there are colors that uh, cannot be printing and which can be replaced by the most closer color possible so in this slide i am showing you uh, the additive color how we add red blue and green to get white red plus green are yellow is equal to yellow red plus blue is equal to magenta and uh, a blue plus green is equal to cyan and uh, on the other side the abstractive the subtractive color scheme you have the primaries cyan magenta and yellow and cyan plus magenta gives you a blue cyan plus yellow gives you green and if you want red you add magenta and yellow so this was about the second section, the third and last section in this uh, short chapter, but essential chapter is color models in video. And you will use all these color models in the uh, following 
uh, chapters. For color model videos, we will have to see uh, three or only three color models. And before that, we want to talk about the video color transforms. So the methods in video color transforms are derived from the older analog uh, method of coding color for TV and they usually luminance in which luminance is usually separated from the color information and you have the matrix transform method as usually and as you can see on this map you can distinguish uh, three major uh, uh, systems used when the video was analog and two of which are uh, relatively very very similar the parameters are almost the same so we name them uh, we uh, we join them to refer to them as pulse cam and the first one is called ntsc color system uh, ntsc video standard uh, for analog video and this standard was in north america and japan as you can see it is in north america where there is a green and in Japan also and it uses the color system YIQ we will see now and the other uh, regions use the PAL or SECAM uh, video types and for this they refer to YUV here IQ and UV refer to the chrominance, uh, to the chrominance uh, channels and the Y is for luminance so always in the video color uh, uh, system in the video color models we separate the luminance from the chrominance because uh, for transferring for storing for everything it is very crucial for us to not down sample the Y channel because as we said in the beginning of this chapter the eye is very sensitive to the luminance and is less sensitive to the colors when the baby is born, the first thing you show him on the TV, you, you buy special videos for the for your baby or through the channels, online channels. The dedicated videos are only black and white, only grayscale videos because the eye of the baby is not capable yet to differentiate the chrominance but is very sensible to the luminance. So, whatever the coding scheme is, whatever the uh, the um, compression is we don't touch the luminous channel that's why the video color schemes um, separate the uh, the luminance from the color information so back to our systems we saw that MTC uh, NTSC uses uh, YIQ PAL or SECAM uses YUV in Europe most uh, uh, and in Europe and in Asia and uh, Palsecam is the same and you have now lately the digital videos which use another color scheme which is the YCBCR which is very very close to the YUV okay so for the YUV we begin with it is initially used in PAL video as we just said and it is now used in the standard that is CCIR standard for digital videos so uh, the YUV codes a uh, luminance signal which is Y and it becomes Y prime when it is gamma corrected and we refer to it by the name Luna, Luma and we have the colorfulness scale which are U and V and we call them the chrominance and the difference between color and reference uh, white at the same luminance. So use color differences which are U u equal b prime minus y prime and v equal i prime uh, sorry r prime minus y prime and this is a transfer formation matrix when r prime b prime and g prime are nonlinear because they are gamma corrected so prime equal gamma corrected uh, if you want a gray color you have a uh, the three primaries must have the same value so you will have the gray color so the luminance without any prominence and uh, the luminance that gray is uh, equal to uh, is equal to one if you add these primaries. And in this case, because because from the matrix you have you have RGB uh, you have U and V are zero, and the luminance is equal to uh, 0 0.299 
R is suppose equal to 1 plus 0.587 G plus 0.1114. So this is the luminance which will be equal in that case to 1. In composite video, it is convenient that uh, you move a little bit the range of display of the, the range of variations of uh, YUV. So instead of using this, this formula, we will use another formula that is more convenient to the following restrictions, which are Y prime must vary between um, must the, the, the value of uh, Y prime. Um, plus or minus the root square of u uh, to the power 2 plus v to the power 2 must be equal inside the range uh, minus 1 over 3 plus 4 over 3 and for this u and v are rescaled to these formulas so that they, uh, they are inside this range and when we say chrominance when we say chrominance in video color model, it means the composite signal, the signal of composition. So we we used to put the chrominance into one cable and the luminance into another cable. So you, how do we mix the chrominance? It is u times cosine uh, cosine uh, w t plus v times sine. We continue with the uh, with the y u v color model, and here we will see. We will see. We will see together the how we obtain this uh, color model uh, in just in a second. So both u and v go negative. So both u and v go negative, and zero is not a minimum value for u and v. So just in seconds, when I will display this matrix in uh, side MATLAB, I have to scale because to in order to show you the the images as gray scales. But the uh, MATLAB is used to have um, uh, values between 0 or and 1 or between 0 and 255. So I have the U and V which is uh, this one and this one, uh, this channel and this channel. They are between not 0, they have negative values. So I rescale in order for you to see the, to see the uh, images, to see the primaries. And as we have already explained, U is uh, relative to the red and uh, V is relative to the blue. So you have high values here. You have high values here because there is a blue color in the original image because this is the V channel. And in Sanos, you have high values in the U channel because the nose is red. So you can see. And this. Here, this channel is the luminance, which is the grayscale uh, image of this colored image. So, in the RGB cube, you will vary from blue, which is positive, to yellow, which is negative. V will vary from uh, red, uh, which is v positive, to cyan, where V is negative. The other color model is the YIQ, which is used in NTSC uh, standard and uh, in which gray pixels uh, are uh, uh, have also zero I and Q channels, zero chrominance signals. So here I and Q are the chrominance and Y is the luminance. And uh, I and Q are rotated version of U and G. So they are U and V but rotated. And uh, the Y prime is the same one as in the YUV, and the rotation is as in this formula, and the matrix of transformation is the following. So the, the transformation from one color model to another is easy, but why do we have more than one color model? Because there are methods that uses one that use one and others than choose another so for example a scientific researcher in Japan of course will elaborate a method for for example compression of video uh, in NTSC so using the color scheme YIQ and another one in France will elaborate one using YUV of course standard lately came and they all now use YCBCR but this is the origin of the story 
but uh, there are codes and the um, codings that uses that use these color schemes so uh, again again here in why i uh, in why i q we can and we will now just at the end of the lecture display mandrel and then uh, this is an rgb image so we have the r channel the green channel and black channel we will apply a predefined function for transforming this image in yiq and i as as i'm telling you it is easy to write the function ourselves because we have the parameters we have the transformation matrix but for today we will pass this and then we will visualize each of the channels apart so this is the y as you can see it's the same same y as previously and this is uh, again the i channel and the q channel and you can see it, they are not really related to the i and q but they are rotations uh, last slide in this chapter we will see together the ycbcr color model so here we have a channel called y another channel called chrominance blue and another channel called chrominance of red and be aware it's not ycrcb it's ycbcr color model and this color model was used in the recommendation standard for digital video and used in the jpeg image compression and mpeg video compression and it is a yuv but change scaling that so that uh, cb is uh, y is u but with coefficient 0 0.5 applied to uh, b prime and cb and cr are shifted values to become inside the interval 0 and 1 equations as as follow however another time again we transform them because of the recommendation 601 uh, wants us to code the uh, YCBCR over 8-bit coding and she imposes, it imposes this recommendation that Y will vary between two, uh, 219 we have the range 0 to 55 but she doesn't want to use all the range because she wants to um, use the other uh, possible values for other, uh, for other uh, operations so the y prime will vary between uh, 16 and 218 to 218 and the cvcr will be ranging between plus or minus 112 and with an offset of plus 128 which means that they vary from 16 to 240 and uh, whenever r g and b prime are in the range of 0 plus 1 y1 y prime cbcr will be in the range of 0 to 55 through this transformation matrix so we use this transformation matrix again uh, again everything is already uh, present in the image toolbox inside matlab you can find it also in the image toolbox inside python but it is not hard to understand that this is not magic this is only transformation linear transformation and this is the end of the chapter but we are not finished we will do some small application on matlab application a small matlab application we will create a new script in which we are going to write our code because it is easier to press here run instead of rewriting every time we have a mistake so here i am going to write in this script i am equal m read the image mandrel the image mandrel dot i guess bmp and let us run first to see if it, it will read. Uh, he wants me to uh, to to save the script before running it. And here we go. It is opening the image, which is 512 times 512 times un unsigned int 8. So let us see this image. 
m show m show i am and we will run again and we will have our mandrel mandrel image of the lecture so this is our beautiful mandrel and uh, we want and we know now we know that is an image with three channels which are r g and b so we want to separate these channels it is easy so image r is the matrix that is the sub matrix of m is equal to m but with the full range in width full range in height and the first channel only same thing i will do to reproduce m j g and m b so i will change only here instead of MRMG channel 2 and MB for blue channel is the channel 3 so if I run this code what will happen I will have my image uh, variable but also I have three other matrices which are not three dimensional which are two dimensional so each matrix is coded over eight bits if I want to see them if I want to see them, I will open figure 2, for example, in order to, uh, to see my image, MR, and the same thing I will do with M, G, and M, B. So I will display simultaneously four images on the screen just like we saw in the lecture and here is my MB and I will run the code and I will move the images so I can see them. So this is a black channel represented, represented as a um, grayscale image because it is over 8 bits whenever MATLAB sees a matrix over 8 bits you int 8 so he will suppose that this is a grayscale image in fact there is no difference but the what we know that this is the red channel green channel and blue channel so let us make a small um, a small adjustment to the color map to tell the matlab that we want to see this in uh, instead of gray level we want to see it in red level because this is the red channel and the same for the others so what I will write here I will create a custom color map a custom made color map a custom color map I will make a color map special for R for the red channel and a special one for the blue and one for the green in the one for the uh, R channel in order to see only the red color I will provide uh, normal values for the red channel and zeros for the green and blue so in this case whenever he wants to show me something he will show it in only red and I will repeat this process so I will create first a vector that goes from 0 to 1 but this will give me only two values 0 and 1 I wanted to have 256 values because my um, my image red is coded over u int 8 over u int 8 so it has 2 to the power 8 values so I want to go to from 0 to 1 with a step which is 1 over 256 so this will give me the vector I want I will show you an example here I uh, have a vector a which is equal which is equal from 0 to uh, to 10 with a step with a step of 2 I will not put semicolon here in order to see what is a a is equal 0 2 4 6 8 and 10 so in the same logic I created my vector from 0 to 1 B I will create another vector which is only zeros so there is the function zeros of one line 256 column so I want a very vertical vector which is zeros and back to my command line I want to show you how to make this vector a vertical vector so I make a um, 
A uh, and this uh, sign and the code sign it is the transpose of A and it will become the vertical vector so in this way I will make my map of red map of red is the vectors V prime with Z prime and again Z prime and let us try it here M equal uh, the matrix composed of A prime space A prime and this is a matrix of two columns and five and one two three four five six lines and here I will have a matrix of three columns and 256 lines and then I will show R I will show R um, inside here I will say figure one figure one to let me and here I will tell the M show uh, may uh, function that you must show me R that using my custom made map R and again I will make a uh, sorry a custom made map for the green channel and the blue channel and here is my custom make for green I will have zero and V and zero and for blue I will have zeros zeros and V and I want you to use here the map map G and here the map especially made for the, the black, uh, blue channel and now I will run my code and I will get an error and this error is because the dimensions of the matrices are not the same so I have a, a mistake here of course I have this mistake because I have to divide by 255 so let us run again and here are our channels so the same matrix the same variables I didn't touch the variables but I touched the display I showed you those variables with this uh, trick. Now back to our pro to our command line. I will clear everything, and I will go. Uh, I all. I will also close everything. Close all, and I will clear also all the variables. And I have no more variables, and I will clear the command line, and I will go again to my script to show you that I can use for example RGB if I write in the command line RGB2 and then press tab the MATLAB will offer me the set of predefined functions that are transformations from RGB color space to for example gray color space SSV indexed color space with a uh, custom loot lab color space which is we just saw XYZ and NTC NTSC color space which is nothing else than YIQ XYZ color space and finally YCBCR which is similar very similar to YUV so let's try YIQ now go back to my script and have a uh, mandrel I will I will modify the script a little bit so I will uh, remove the Comment to create a custom a command line I will remove the comment to create figures because over one figure I will subplot and I will show you how to see the different channels so first I open image equal uh, M read mandrel second what do, shall I do I will transform my image into an image YIQ which is equal to RGB to um, 
NTSC of M. So I get my three dimensional image. Now I will separate the Y, I, Q channels. So I here can, I can use this command, but I change Y is equal uh, M, Y, I, Q one. And I is equal to the second channel and Q is equal to the third channel. And here we have the figure and I will subplot this figure. So subplot the figure into two lines, two columns. And for the first line, M show M and not in gray because this is a three-dimensional image and then subplot and m show y and then subplot and m show i and finally subplot and in show Q but every time I have to make attention this here I want in the second part of the image third part and fourth part let us run first to see what will we will have but we will modify this so run and over one image I have the color the original one the Y which is fine and the I and Q which are not scaled because they are values they are doubles and M show is used to show us U and A so M show is not, not the right function to use here we will use instead image SC which will scale our values to be image image SC which will scale our values in order to be between 0 and 1 only for display purpose so now you know the difference between the M show and image I will add titles for each part of this image title and I will provide a string between simple quotes and here I will write original original and then I will provide the title here it will be the Y channel and here the I channel and finally the Q channel and now I will run and as you can see our images are just the same that we saw inside our lectures this is Y, I and Q and here are our titles again I can repeat the same experience but instead of uh, calling Y to NTSC I can call Y to as you guessed uh, uh, RGB to Y C, B, C, R and then here I will write C, B this is a variable name this will not change anything but we would like to be perfect and Y C, B C, R and C, B channel and C, R channel let us finally run this we have a small mistake there is no function called ycbcr what is the name small letters okay this is a very minor problem ycbcr small letters run again and here we have our ycbcr channel and subplotted with the original image all what you have to do in order to make your uh, homework is to save as 
and then you choose the figure uh, JPEG format so that you can save your figure. You give it a name, for example, YCBCR channels, and you have your image in your workspace folder. So this is it, and we go back and we see what is what else is in there in the assignment you have um, an additional uh, an additional exercise which is a uh, color model transformation and um, this one i will edit here in front of you in order so you can solve it and you have to open again mandrel and uh, to view the three uh, planes already already done here already done here in the first exercise display the rgb channel so this is done so what is left for the last exercise You have to write your own uh, YIQ. So apply RGB to YUV transform. So write a function, write a function RGB to YCBCR. Write your own function, okay? I know that this exists in MATLAB write a function that is uh, like this let's call it my YRGB to YCRCB CBCR and uh, my inverse function to go back YCBCR to RGB and that reverses a given image uh, as defined in JPEG uh, 2000 from RGB to YCBCR and from uh, YCBCR to RGB and this is the exercise number four and I gave you here the equation I gave you the equations you just write a function and you apply this equation for example how I will show you how you write a new function and you say that m out is equal to function to function which takes function my y C B C R uh, my R G B to Y C B C R. I, I give you an image. You give me M out. How do I calculate M out? Just like I showed you. I copy and paste this code here because we have matrix uh, matrix calculation. So. Uh, y is equal to r plus 2 g p plus 4 all you have to do is to have the y c b c r channels the y r, uh, r and uh, y sorry y g and b channels so you take them and you say r channel is equal m of 1 b channel is equal the input image 2 and C channel is equal the input image 3 and now you have to transform them into into uh, so M is equal to double of M because you are making divisions and op operations and then you have M out 
the easiest way to make m out is uh, the same dimension as m is to affect it to m and later when you have your uh, ycbcr let us put semicolons at the end uh, you you join those channels into one uh, one uh, channel so you say m out of one is equal to y and m out of two is equal to uh, what did we call it here we have r g and b and here we have c b and here we have channel 2 and here we have channel 3 so I have my M out now I can return M out I don't return it to unsigned int 8 because this is not inside the that range so I leave it like this because look it is always double here and uh, if you give me the image name instead of giving me the image matrix so the first thing here is to read the image m read and i take the parameter image name to read this image so this is my function i will save it i will save it how he will propose to me uh, maybe i should write function first So save and now he will propose to me the name of the function the same thing as I uh, wrote, uh, wrote and I save it and in order to use this in inside my code I can directly use it how instead of calling RGB to y YCBCR I just call simply my function that I just uh, created so we have an error so we click over the error to see what is the problem and he will tell us that expecting MATLAB expression and 2G is not a MATLAB expression so we will multiply we will use the asterisk to multiply and then we go back to our code and we make sure that our code provides the, um, the image name because our function takes not the matrix but the image name and we make sure that the image we provide is inside our current folder so here I am working in a folder special for this lab and I put mandrel inside it in all, instead of doing giving the full pass as you already see and now I will go back to my code and I will try to run it again and this time I got my RGB but uh, but I have the CB and CR channels equal so I must have done something wrong and I will see here what is my problem I have left this typo here so now I can save and I can run again and here are my YCB and CR channels successfully written so as you saw it's very easy to do what is uh, the predefined MATLAB uh, functions so this was all about our course color our color course and our color lecture and next in the next videos we will be seeing the dithering, the dithering function that we saw in the images um, chapter and we will see another lab, another worksheet also to apply the straightforward mid, uh, lookup table construction and especially for also the median cut lookup table so stay tuned until next videos